There are times when people at Lucasfilm do things that make you just scratch your head, perhaps wonder how in the possible world could they even come up with something like they have done. We've seen it time and time again. The sequel trilogy, the series on Disney+, Plus, some of the Mandoverse stuff, things that Kathleen Kennedy has approved, writers, directors who she seems to love. In this case, one of those writers has said something so stupid, it seriously deserves its own award. Let us introduce you to the one and only, John Caston. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is another fine day here at the WDW Pro Channel, and we hope it's a fine day for you as well. We're explaining entertainment, keeping you ahead of the culture curve. That way you know what's coming even before it happens. You can tell your friends, I saw that coming way ahead. Well, today we are helping you understand just how dumb, just how utterly stupid the people at Lucasfilm must be. We hate to say that. We hate to impugn such a grandiose studio, yet that is where we are as we are dealing with Jonathan Caston, who has said something so, so pitiful that it just, it deserves its own video. And given that he has worked on Solo, A Star Wars Story, given that he has worked on Willow, Given his pedigree, his family history, we knew that you all would want to hear about it. Join us for a fresh take on this subject. Not having heard or read anything about this, we have the one and only investigative reporter for thatparkplace.com, Jonas J. Campbell. Hey, it's good to be here today. Oh my goodness, this headline. Uh, when you told me what we would be talking about today, I, I don't think I could have produced this headline and believed that it was real. No, a parody would not work with this because no one would believe it, but it it is here and it's actually a little old. We apologize for just now getting to this, but if you noticed last week, Disney was quite busy putting out lots and lots and lots of very negative headlines for themselves and we just couldn't keep up. And now we're finally getting back to this. It does deserve its own video. Folks, before we start into this topic, if you like content like this, consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe, and... You can stick it to the algorithms. When you click it, we're talking about the notification bell. Here's the headline out of Movie Web. This one by Patricia Abaroa. Willow creator Jonathan Caston is kind of into the series removal from Disney+. Plus. Willow is one of the many titles being removed from Disney+, Plus and Hulu. And this was, of course, on this past Friday. Now, let's, let's describe what has happened here. Uh, Jonas, Willow was so bad so pathetically viewed, such a horrendous failure that Disney decided it was better as a tax write-down, even after it had been on Disney Plus for quite a while, that it, it was better as a tax write-down than as actual content. And let's also further say, Jonas, that this individual, Jonathan Caston, he, uh, he is part of the solo A Star Wars Story history of how that movie came together. That movie is the only movie that is publicly acknowledged as being a flop for the Star Wars franchise. This is a man who had the genius creativity to decide that uh, Lando Calrissian should be interested in bedroom sort of ways in robots. He is just about the most talentless person I have ever seen credited as being talented. Jonas, any thoughts before we get into this? You don't know exactly the context of how he said, but I promise it's as bad as you can imagine. What, what do you think about it so far? I think he's got a great last name, doesn't he? Look, look at that last name. <laughs> if only his first name were Lawrence. Oh, man. All right, let's continue on. Here we go. You just, people, you won't believe this. Willow series creator. Jonathan Caston is taking a glass half full approach to the series removal from Disney Plus. Yeah, it's not so bad that nobody watched it. The short-lived series, a sequel to the 1988 cult classic film of the same name, was canceled in March. And earlier this month, it joined an expansive list of titles leaving Disney Plus and Hulu on May 26th. The cost-cutting move sees series like Turner and Hooch, The Mysterious Benedict Society, and The Mighty Ducks Game Changers exit the streamer. Fans have not been happy with some of the choices made, but Caston does not seem to upset over the news of Willow's unavailability as of this past Friday. And here's what he said on Twitter. He says, I have been quiet on this news that Willow is leaving Disney Plus because I'm kind of into it. 
I guess like Lando is with robots. I grew up at a time when Disney movies were periodically re-released and not available to own, and it made them more special. I worry about many things, but none of them are that Willow will never be available again, either on Disney Plus or perhaps someplace else. You never know where that could lead. Stranger things have happened. So grateful for all the love and enthusiasm, it's truly what keeps these worlds alive. And that last statement has to be the dumbest thing I have ever read. So grateful for all the love and enthusiasm, it's truly what keeps these worlds alive. The Willow world is dead and you killed it, sir. Caston, you killed Willow. It already had barely a beating heart in it. It was a cult classic from 30 years ago. And you managed to bury it. You managed to bring it back only to beat it into submission so that nobody cares at all. And now, now that that world is dead, the idea that it's more special because you can't view it. And who knows, maybe in 30, 50 years, maybe it'll be sold off and it could be on Turner Classic streaming, a new channel that'll be somewhere out there. Or maybe it'll be on some godforsaken YouTube channel that nobody watches in 60 years. Who knows, right? Jonas, is this the dumbest thing you've ever read? Is this, I mean, this is, this is whistling past the graveyard while they bury everyone you love. This is just bonkers. Say it ain't so. This just in. Disney lost money on another movie. Why, that can't be. I thought that John Lasseter fella over at Pixar was cranking out the latest hits and Marvel was unstoppable and Disney princesses were a thing and Star Wars was a multi-billion dollar money-making franchise. I overheard you talking about Disney and wanted to let you know you're really behind the ball. If you were uh, getting great articles from thatparkplace.com and subscribe to WDW Pro's YouTube channel, you'd actually be ahead of the culture curve and have entertainment <laughs> explained. Let me tell you why this works and let me tell you why this doesn't work. Uh, the first reason why this works is Jonathan Kasdan is referencing the perfect Disney vault strategy. Disney has this great longtime tactic of saying that everything that they make is a classic and they pretend like it's a classic and they show full faith in whatever it is. They don't do anything to diminish the response to the film. They'll go ahead and put a. They'll go ahead and put in a theme park attraction, whether or not they realize something is going to be a, a huge hit or a flop. So Disney does do that, and they have a tendency, or have had a tendency, to put timeless themes into their movies, giving them an otherworldly quality, meaning that they're behind the times, but they're already kind of perceived as a little bit out of sync. So when 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 Walt says it because we have to differentiate now between Walt and Disney. When when Walt was asked, aren't your movies a little bit cheesy? He says, yes, but I like cheesy. He's He's got this nostalgic feel for a different time that no longer exists. So the vault strategy does work because the people who used to watch it will come back and say, oh yeah, we love that. We're excited for it. There's this scarcity thing. But Willow, as I understand it, um, people are nostalgic for the original Willow. The new Willow, nobody watched it. And also, there are some very dated, uh, let's say, political themes, although it's obviously more than the political aspect that got the controversy. Uh, the music in it is also very dated, as in the music of today. So I'm not sure that they have this opportunity here to say in 10 years, 20 years to say, oh yeah, here is this Disney classic that you just never heard about. I think this is probably going to be something more along the lines of like a, a black cauldron. I see. Well, let's take a look now, Jonas, at uh, Jonathan Caston's history of Hollywood efforts. And I want people to see that this is the person, this person who is kind of into his own series being so terrible that it had to be taken down. This is the guy that Kathleen Kennedy keeps bringing back. Take a look at this. He's been a writer on Willow. He's been a writer on Solo, A Star Wars Story. Before that, it was six years since he had done anything the first time. I have no idea what that is. Before that, it had been five years in the land of women. Before that, it had been Dawson's Creek and Freaks and Geeks. In other words, this is a guy who could not find work as a writer until Kathleen Kennedy decided he needed to be brought along, perhaps as a favor to his father. If we look at his producer credits, it's only 
Solo, A Star Wars Story, Willow, and Willow Behind the Magic. I mean, that is quite the list of failures, and I hate to pick on anybody, but in terms of this statement, we, we just, this is indicative of what is going on at Lucasfilm. This is bigger than just Jonathan Caston, who clearly is in the wrong industry. But at Lucasfilm, this idea that you reward people who have very little ability to produce content worthy of their position, and that then rather than taking accountability for it, they're kind of into the failure. This is incredible. Okay, uh, the thing that, of course, bears bears bringing up here is Jonathan Kasdan's response to the announcement that Willow was canceled in the first place. And what did he have to say there, Jonas? Uh, he said, oh, we're not being canceled. We're just uh, on an indefinite hiatus, and we want to make sure that our super talented uh, writers and actors and all of these amazing in-demand people are free to pursue other projects. So there's a <laughs> there's a history here of may, maybe that's what he needs. He needs. He's to just be a into jolly, good, happy fellow. I tell you, he's just gumdrops and and happiness, rainbows need, and sunshine, man. He, he needs to be in marketing because that's some that's some pretty good spin if people are willing to pick it pick it up. In fact, I would probably call that pixie dusting because Disney now owns uh, Lucasfilm, of course. Uh, and, and do, you, and do you remember, Jonas? Do you remember that when we covered that, when we were covering that Willow had been canceled, and he he put out those statements that people were jumping all over us saying, you lie, you lie, Willow has not been canceled. The actual creator, the writer, the showrunner, he says it's still alive. We were like, it's it's not. It's it's not. We, we Like, we're telling you, they sent the actors home. They sent everyone home. It's not going to continue. And I think they need to be thankful for it because, because yes, Willow will, be, will now live in legend. Uh, someone once brought up to me, what if, what if Michael Jackson had passed away uh, right after he had released Bad or, or, or maybe uh, the first album after that? Instead of all this controversy around him, he'd be a legend the way Elvis is, the way the Beatles were because they broke up. Um, I don't think that's going to happen with Willow because there's, the internet has a much better memory than, uh, than the trades did back in the day. But whew, he is right. Uh, they are doing him a favor by getting rid of this show, but I don't think it's the favor he's saying. And then finally, Jonas, talking about Jonathan Caston having to be reprimanded, corrected, etc. Let's go to his Twitter page. This is the original tweet that we're discussing right here. Jonathan Caston, I've been quiet on this news that we'll yada, yada, yada. We've already read this, right? What's funny about this is if we go down here to Meg F. Disney, you gotta love the name, um, I'm sure Disney loves that. She asks a question about this. The statement that he puts out is so bad that Disney Plus Help, the <laughs> customer service account, has to correct him. We're talking about probably an intern, an 18-year-old, is having to now correct the showrunner for the show. Basically say, no, no, no. So let's read this. Meg says, I appreciate that you always say something to us fans but is there any type of way Willow can actually ever be put on another streaming service? I love your optimism, and I hope you know how much this show means to us fans. Hashtag keep Willow. Disney Plus responds. Thank you for reaching out, Meg. We do not have any additional details on if you'll be able to watch Willow somewhere else. We're sorry for the inconvenience this may cause you. In other words, the hunky-dory everything's going to be okay from Jonathan Cast and Disney Plus is like, no, 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 it's uh. It's gone. It's gone. Oh, my. Gone. Uh, as we say in the South, bless his heart. Bless his heart. It's, it's well earned at this point when when Disney Plus is even having to come in there and correct you and say, no. no now, it does bear acknowledging that uh, Kathleen Kennedy, it was a it was a shrewd move to bring in a Kasdan to write on Solo, a Star Wars story. She was trying to borrow any credibility she could short of bringing in George Lucas who uh, would have been probably a much stronger collaborator. I'll say that in opinion and also in marketing, but they wanted somebody that they could probably control, somebody who works within the system, who would be happy to cash those Disney checks. I'm not calling Jonathan Kasdan a shill, but I, I would say he's more hungry to make his bones. I'll say that. Um, I don't think that that's worked out for them. I think they saw that he was willing to do whatever the company wanted him to do, and that's how he got Willow. If he continues on, I would say that's not a good sign for Lucasfilm. The thing to think about here, 
Jonas is that, you know, we're being rough with Jonathan Kasdan. He has not produced content that has succeeded in any stretch of the imagination. But at the same time, he's a human being. We do not want to make fun of him, mock him, etc. The response makes that difficult. I mean, it's, it's tough given that you're failing and you're confidently, happily failing. That's, that's weird. But really, the blame here, as you have correctly identified, goes on to Kathleen Kennedy. She is someone who should be able to pick out talent, should be able to filter out who is talented and who is not. And clearly, she just doesn't have the ability to do so. Time and time again, she goes back to the well with people that just don't produce at any kind of level that would be acceptable. You look at Ryan Johnson. She wanted him to do a sequel trilogy or a sequel sequel trilogy even before The Last Jedi had made it to theaters. You look at James Mangold. We now know that the Dial of Destiny, Indiana Jones 5, is is just terrible. Review coming when that comes out, and I, I am not feeling too uh, happy about having to go watch that film to do so, but she has already given him a, a Star Wars movie. We don't think that'll actually happen. And here we have Jonathan Caston. He clearly has no ability when it comes to Star Wars uh, or a solo S Star Wars story. And then she gives him a promotion, puts him completely over a series, resurrecting one of the key franchises in the history of the studio, and it fails. She just seems to promote and get behind those who should not have anyone behind them, but rather they should probably be looking at career changes, honestly. And there's no accounting for taste, obviously. Um, everything that she's been attached to has just, it hasn't hit with the audience in the way that it, it, it needed to in order to justify the content spend at Lucasfilm. And I think as we get farther away and more people talk and more information gets out there, because once the information is out there, it's not going back in the bottle. We're going to see what's been happening at Lucasfilm over the last 10 years. Um, I think it really did pass away when when it went to Disney. Um, and, I, and I don't want to be one of those people. It's been a joke uh, among us all that Star Wars is dead is now my catchphrase. It was a joke that we told and we keep telling it. It's an inside joke. But, but they, they seem to want to make that joke actually be real. They're, yes. they're really struggling to make it manifest. They're turning me into a prophet. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, this was a fun conversation. We hate to pick on any one individual. We don't recommend that you do that. In this case, there's just no way to cover this topic without having to say, what in the world? So folks, here's a way that you all can avoid that. We all mess up in life. There are times when we make errors. There are times when we are involved in something and we should not be involved in it. Not in like a moral way, but just like, for example, if you can't cook, you probably don't need to be making the quiche. And if you're stuck making the quiche and it turns out to be terrible, it's okay to just own it and be like, guys, you don't have to eat it. I should not have done this. And if you find yourself in charge of a TV series, a streaming show, and you just poop the bed like Amber Heard on a bad day, it's okay to say, I pooped the bed. Please, don't watch this. All right, Jonas, as we wrap up, please share with the audience, where can they find you on this great, big, beautiful web up there? Well, I'm a writer for That Park Place, where I like to do some investigative journalism. I'm way too active on Twitter. And I also am the producer on the pro show on this channel on Thursdays, 5 to 7 p.m. Or maybe more. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, if you like content like this, consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe, and you can stick it to the algorithms when you click it. We're talking about that notification bell. Please drop a comment down below. Tell us if you think Kathleen Kennedy has also pooped the bed. And tell us if she should now own the damage that's been done to Lucasfilm. Or do you go all the way back to Steven Spielberg and blame him for hiring her to serve him coffee? Maybe it's his fault all along. Whatever the case may be, we covet your comments, so drop one down below. If you're not yet a member of the Pro channel, the WDW Pro YouTube channel, it is the cost of a coffee. Well, not even a Starbucks coffee, half of that. So consider becoming a member and getting more exclusive content. If you do, we're about to put up a video that has Lauren Connor dancing with a literal internet troll. It's the kind of stuff you just can't miss. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and keep having fun. Make sure to catch The Pro Show Thursdays 5 to 7 Eastern Time. Entertainment Explained, The Culture Curve Conquered, live with Pro and all his friends.